So today we're going to be looking at the next topic for conic sections, which are ellipses. Okay. Now ellipses are found when you don't take those two. It's this one. So if you take the two cones that are pointing at each other, you take a slice that is kind of a diagonal that goes out of each side of a cone. All right. All right. This is the definition of ellipse, and no one cares. Okay, so let's get into how we figured out ellipses. So we're going to be doing three things, two today and one tomorrow. Uh, the two we're going to do today is we're going to learn how to graph using the equation, and then using the graph, uh, get the equation. All right, so there's a lot of pieces that are going to be similar between this and hyperbolas. It's very important that you understand the differences. We get to hyperbolas uh, the week after Thanksgiving. All right, we do see something similar, though. We do see our H and K. Our H and K is going to be the center of our ellipse. Okay, so it's the same rules for parabolas. H is next to the X, K is next to the Y. When they both come out, they are both positive, or they both change signs, rather. Okay, so when H and K come out of the equation, they change their signs. All right, some new stuff is that A and B. Let's look at the A first. The A is what is called the semi-major excess length. Okay, it's the major because it's the longer one. So the A value is always going to be the longer value of the two and the fractions in your ellipse equation. Okay, we find that major excess length from the center to the outside edge of the longest part of your ellipse. Okay, that is A. The B is the semi-minor excess length. So we've got major, which is longer, versus minor, which is the smaller. And the minor excess length is always going to be the smaller number. And it's, again, it's going to go from the uh, center of your ellipse to the outside edge, but the shorter of the two distances. Okay, and that is going to be B. As I just mentioned before, the A value is always bigger than B. So here's how this works. One of the things that's key to ellipses, the X and the Y values will stay where they are. X goes first, Y goes second. What will switch is the A and B values. Okay, And wherever A is determines which way the ellipse is orientated. So in this case, in our example, the A squared value is underneath the X term. That means the uh, ellipse is going to be orientated horizontally, so the long side is horizontally along the x-axis. If the a value moves under the, x, the y term, then the ellipse is going to be orientated vertically along the y-axis. Okay? All right. One other thing that's not in here that is going to be important when we're graphing, and it's going to be important for day two of ellipses, is those purple dots. Those purple dots are your focal points. Okay? And the c value we're going to find out is what's called the focal length. Okay, your C value is not in the equations, but it's going to be an important piece in order to graph these. And then later on, when you're have given information to find an equation, you're going to need to know this information about C as well. Okay, C is the focal length. It's the distance between the center and the focal point. There's two of them, unlike a parabola, there's only one focal point. That is the C value. Okay, now to find C, there is a formula. It's a very easy formula. It's almost like a Pythagorean formula, but it's a squared minus b squared equals c squared. Okay? So when you take those two numbers and you uh, combine them together and solve for c and square root both sides, you will get the c value, which we'll show you how to do in just a moment. All right. So here's our equation. Okay? So one of the first things you need to do is we're going to find the center. Okay? The center is the h comma k. You're going to change the signs on the H, H and K. So negative 4 becomes positive and positive 2 becomes negative. So we can plot those two points on our graph. Next, we're going to find the largest value. Either that's going to be the A value, and that is right there. It's the 25 is bigger than 16, so that must be the A squared term. All right. We want to know what A is. So it's going to be the square root of 25, which is just 5. Now, the tricky part of this is to figure out which way it goes. Does it go left and right, or does it go up and down? Okay, so since the 25 is underneath the y term, that means the a value is going to go up and down. Okay, so we're going to go up 5 and down 5 from our center point to find the two major excess lengths. Remember, a is major excess length. Okay. Then the next term is your b squared term. So we need to find what b is. The square root of 16 is 4. And then we're going to go, since it is underneath the x value, it is going to go left and right. So we go left and right by 4 from the center piece. All right, and we can uh, plot our points there. Okay, now we have the four um, 
points that are going to make up our ellipse. We're going to make a the best you can of an ellipse. It's not a circle. It's an ellipse. All right. And the last thing we got to do is when we're graphing, we have to put the focal points in. Foci, same thing. Focal points, foci. All right. So we have our formula. C squared equals A squared minus B squared. We put in the A and A squared and B squared values. We get 9. Take the square root of 9, and you get 3. Okay, so now one of the key points of this is, and you should have noted, hopefully you noticed this in the last slide when we had the introduction to ellipses, the focal points are always located on the same axis as the major axis length. So whatever A is on, it's where C is on too. So these focal points are going to go 3 up and down <clears throat> from our center point. Okay. Now, these will change depending on where the A value is. If the A is under the X term, the focal points will go along the X axis, go horizontally. In these case, because the A values are underneath the Y term, it's going to go vertical. And that's it. And that is the equation, or sorry, that is the graph to your ellipse. Let's try another one. Again, we want to find the center. It is 0, comma, negative 8. So we'll plug that point in there. <clears throat> Next, we've got to find the largest term to find A, which is right there at 16. So that's the A squared value. A, take the square root of 16, will be 4. Okay. Now, this value of 16 is underneath the X term. That means the major excess length of 4 on each side of the um, center point is going to go left and right okay, along the X axis. Next, we've got to find the B term. The B squared value is 1. So to find b, we take the square root of 1, which is just 1. Since that value is underneath the y value, um, we're going to go up and down 1 to find the minor excess length. Points. Okay. Now we can draw our ellipse. All right. And the last thing we're going to do is find the focal points. Okay. So we have our formula. a squared is 15, b squared is 1. You subtract those two, you get 15. Square root of 15 is going to be about 3.9. So it's close to 4, but it's not quite 4. So for the focal points when you're graphing these, they have to be included. You have to kind of delineate between what is an endpoint of your ma major excess length and the focal points. Do the best you can. Um, they're really close to the endpoints of the major excess length, but just put them down so you can see them. They're really close to 4. Okay, and there's your equate or sorry, there's your graph for the ellipse. Next one, I need again. We need to find the center, which is at negative two and negative four. So we can plot that point. All right, the a value is going to be seven because forty nine is bigger than nine. Let's go to forty nine and seven. The b value. Oh, let's put in the points for seven. Again, because the a squared value is underneath the x term, those points are going to go left and right of the center. Your b value is going to be 3, which is square root of 9, and they'll go up and down from the center of three spots. Draw our ellipse, and then put in our focal points. So we have 49 minus 9 gives you the square root of, uh, sorry, you subtract those, you get 40, square root that, square root that, you get 6.3. Okay, so again, you do your best for the focal points. Again, they are on the ma major excess length. Do the best you can to get them where they kind of go. All right. And there's our graph. Okay, the focal points must be included in your graph. All right, last of the graphing. <clears throat> so now we have our center is going to be negative 5 and 0. Put that down as our point. The a value in this case is going to be uh, a squared is 36, so the a value will be 6. Because the a value is underneath the y term, that means it goes up and down by 6. The b value will be 2, which means it's going to go left and right because that's underneath the x term. Draw our ellipse. And lastly, the focal points. You have 36 minus 4, which gives you 32. Square root of 32 is about 5.6.
All right, again, make sure that you put these focal points inside the ellipse going up and down because they are going along the major axis length. That is the or sorry, that is the graph for your ellipse. All right. Let's look at going reverse. The reverse is actually a little bit easier because you already have the focal points in there and you don't need to put them into anything because your equation doesn't have focal points in it. There's no C value in your equation. Okay. Probably the hardest part about doing these is finding the center. Okay. So what you might want to do is count from the top to the bottom and side to side to figure out what the total distance is from the widest spot and find out where those middle, where they kind of like almost lines cross. Uh, between the going side to side and up and down for the lines. Okay, in this case, <clears throat> we're going to start off with like gen the general like um, format of an ellipse. You have two fractions that are being added, okay, equaling one. So I'm going to start filling in the stuff. First of all, the center is going to be here at negative five and one. Okay, so when we put those values into your um, equation, you of changing the sign. So it becomes negative five, becomes positive five, and positive one becomes negative one. Okay. Again, the X and the Y terms on the top of your fractions won't change which way which one comes first. That happens later in the hyperbolas, but that's for another day. All right, what does change is where the A and the B values are. Okay, in this case, if you count from the um, uh, center to the top of your ellipse, right? You can see that since we're counting to the top, it's going to go along the y-axis. So your a value is going to be underneath the y terms. So if we count, your a squared term is going to be 8. So if we square that, we get 64. Your b value is going to go there. So b squared. So we count to both sides of that. We get 4. Take a uh, square, or we square 4, we get 16. And that is your equation. It is now done. Okay, so it's kind of just find the information on the ellipse and then write down the numbers where they belong and the right orientation, you're good. Try the next one. We're going to put our uh, formatting down. Our center again, if we find out the middle of our um, ellipse, it looks like it's going to be at 2 comma 0. Right. So your h is 2, your k is 0. We put those values into the uh, equation. You're going to get negative 2 and 0. You don't need to put a plus or minus 0. You just get y squared. All right. This time, because the major axis length is horizontal, going left to right, got to count the distance between the center and the edges, which will be 6. It's going to go underneath the x term because it is horizontally orientated. So it's going to get 36. And then for the b value, that goes right there. The b value is going to go up and down. Looks like by 3. So when you square it, you get 9. And there's your equation for the ellipse. Do another one. There's our formatting. Again, the center of our uh, ellipse looks like it's going to be right there. So at 2 comma 2. When you're building it, H and K is 2, so they both become negative. Because the graph is vertically orientated, which means it's kind of look like it's going up and down, there's going to be your A value underneath the Y term. Looks like it is 7, if I counted correctly, and I did. All right, so you square 7, you get 49. And on left and right, it's going to be 2 for your B term, which gives you 4. All right, looks like the last one. So our center looks like it's going to be right at negative 5 comma 0. Putting that in the equation, we're going to get x plus 5 and then y squared. The A value is going to go underneath the x term because it's horizontally orientated which is going to be 5, so we get 25. And the B value is going to be 2, which gives us 4. And that is using a graph to find the equation. All right, that's all we got for today. Tomorrow we're going to look at using information to find equations of ellipses. Good luck.